hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about Gregor Mendel's experiments, his results, and explained those results using Mendel's law of dominance and segregation. What we're going to do in this video is cover the next top point, which says describe the aspects of experimental techniques used by Mendel that led to his success. So what we have to do in this video is name the actual aspects and describe exactly what they, they were. And it, we have to go and relate that back to how they were successful as well. So how his experiment was a well-designed experiment. So before we start, I quickly want to go over again what a well-designed experiment is, especially a scientific experiment, and what you need to focus on, what you need to be able to have to say that, okay, your experiment was actually quite good. You need to have these three concepts incorporated. You have to have accuracy, reliability, and validity. Now, reliability, this is to do with consistency. So what you can imagine, if you have a dartboard, and I were to just throw darts, and you have one here, one here, one here, and one there, and this is obviously not very consistent, so that's not consistency. Reliability means that you have them all in the same area. So, for example, we all have them here. Now we have a reliable result. But the problem is it's not accurate. So accuracy means we want to have the correct, the expected result, the correct result, the result that we're expecting or that we're wanting. So, for example, um, instead of getting them here, if we have both reliability and accuracy, we'll get them all in the same area, but we'll all get them in the bullseye. That's what we're actually wanting to do. But then we've got validity. Validity means that your actual experiment is valid. So that it's the correct experiment to do. So for example, if I were to say, okay, well, you've got them all in the bullseye, and you all, all, all of the ones that you shot are all in the same area, all the bullseye. But the problem is the game itself, we don't actually want to hit the bullseye. We want to hit here. This is where your major points are. Let's say here we have more points than in the center. So less points here. Then your actual dart throwing whilst it had accuracy because you, you thought you wanted to hit it in the bullseye and your reliability because you're all hit in the bullseye, your actual validity wasn't there because while your, the, game, the game rules were different. So validity refers to that your actual experiment was correctly designed to give you actual valid results. Accuracy is to make sure that what you wanted to achieve has been achieved. And reliability means that whenever you've tried it, you've always gotten the same result. Now, with these experiments, he made sure all these factors were there. So, for example, when he had these purebreds, so we said that he separated, he made the purebreds. So he made, for example, one plant, a couple of plants which had all the green, and a couple of plants that had all, all the actual yellow peas. And he did that by having separate greenhouses. So he had two years. For two years, he just bred these different plants, and he kept them separate. So he had one house for the yellow ones and one house for the green ones. And this here increased his accuracy because whenever he now he could be reassured that his actual idea could be accurately tested because he didn't have a, you know, his, his actual plans were pure. And he made sure of that by keeping them separate and doing it for two years in terms of cross breeding them separately for two years. And that improved the accuracy. Now he also he made sure to compare only one trait at a time. Just like, for example, when we tested the enzyme activity and the pH, when we tested both, we tested an experiment, we tested pH, temperature, and concentration in your enzyme activity experiment. But at the same time, when you, for example, tested the pH, you kept the temperature the same. So we only test one thing at a time, especially when, it's, in this case, the monohybrid crossing, which is only looking at one trait. So he did that. He only tested one trait at a time. So, for example, he tested, he compared the yellow with... The green. You could have also tested, for example, yellow green and then maybe the difference in pod as well. So you might have had the green pod and the yellow pod. But he did that, he did that, but he didn't do it at the same time. He only did one at a time. So he only looked at in this case he compared the yellow and the green piece. So that increased the validity of the experiment because that is a correct experimental design. You should only test one trade at a time, especially if that's your objective. Also, he tested various traits to confirm his findings. So first, you know, he might have started with this. He might have started with the yellow and the green P. But then he tested the pods. So after he did this, he did the same experiment again. He kept everything constant except for he maybe changed the pods. Then he maybe changed the color of the actual peas. He had one which were pink, one which were white. He did that to make sure that 
he, now if you he only had the peas, if you only had the experiment of the peas, someone might have said, okay, well, there might be a genetics which might be different for the peas than for anything else. But by doing it with every single trait and every single feature, he could confirm that his actual experiment was not just pea specific, but every part of the plant responded the same way. So by testing various traits, one after the other, he increased the validity because the experiment was now correct. Experimental design was good. He also did the maths. So he had the Punnett square, you know, he had lots of calculations. And the calculations obviously could also helped to increase the validity. Because if you can say, okay, we will I'm not just I don't just guess them, I'm not just doing that by looking at at you know, the, the, my guessing, but I've actually got the numbers, the statistics to back me up. That increases your validity. So that was really good to do it for him as well. And he did he made sure to do the maths correctly. And he did lots of it as well. So he also when he, when he for example um, cross pollinated so he had the pure ones, you know, he had the pure the ones that only produce yellow ones and the only ones that only produce green ones. And then he brought them together. So he cr crossed one of the yellow ones with one of the green ones. So he cross pollinated purebreds. But he did it by hand. And he did it by hand because for example if he did it by wind, if he just relied on wind to do it, maybe that wouldn't have happened. Maybe if he did it by wind, something else would have happened. But by doing it by hand himself he could make sure that what actually was cross-pollinated was exactly the green with the yellow. So that increased the accuracy because now he could make sure there was no mistake. The wind didn't, by mistake, cross-pollinate the wrong stuff. By doing it by hand, he made sure that he did it exactly how he wanted to do it, which was he cross-pollinated the green with the yellow for his first part of the experiment. Then also when he cross-pollinated these um, green with the yellow. He also removed the anther, which was this here, because in actual plants, how it works is every plant can actually self-pollinate, which means that the actual well, you can imagine. I mean, it's called the pollen, which is similar to sperm. So the anther is the male reproductive system, stigma is the female, and what can happen is the actual pollen can go go, and it can go into its own plant and fertilize itself. But obviously, when he wanted to cross-pollinate yellow with green, he didn't want the yellow one to cross pollinate itself to make yellow ones. He wanted the green one to be in there. So what he did, he just removed all of the anthers, so all of the male reproductive systems, to make sure that self pollination couldn't happen. So he removed an anther to remove risk of self pollination, and that also increased the accuracy because now he could make sure what he actually wanted to achieve was being tested, because there was no risk of self pollination. And also, he repeated the experiment hundreds of times. So he didn't just do, you know, he looked at one plant. He didn't just cross one yellow plant with one green plant. But he did this experiment hundreds of times. So repeat the experiment hundreds of times. And that increases your reliability. Remember, reliability was how consistent your results are. So if it were just for one actual experiment, if you did just once, then maybe he got the result, but maybe they weren't reliable. Maybe he did it again, he got a completely different result. But by doing it hundreds of times for every different trait, he could see that, yep, his results kept coming up, the consistent results kept coming up the same, so that increased reliability. So by having all of these different techniques, he could make sure his ex actual experimental design was really well done, because he focused on having both accuracy, reliability, and validity. When he separated them in different greenhouses, the pure breeds, and he did that for two years, he could make sure that he would grow pure breeds, which were either both all yellow or all green, and that increased the accuracy. He only compared one trait at a time. He did compare lots of different traits, but only one at a different at a time. And that increased the validity because you need to have a controlled variable for a valid experiment. He tested various traits to make sure that you know it didn't just happen for the green peas and the, and the yellow peas, but happened for the difference in pods, the difference in length of the actual flower. When he tested all these traits, the same results came up and increased the validity. So it was that it showed that his experiment actually had correct findings. And he did the maths. Again, if he didn't just say, okay, I, I'm thinking this is what happened, but he did the maths to just underline that fact. He increased the accuracy by removing the anthers to risk to remove the risk of self-pollination because plants can actually pollinate themselves. So when he wanted to cross the yellow with the green, he removed the actual anthers to make sure that it wouldn't the yellow wouldn't wouldn't self-pollinate itself. Also, he did it by hand. So doing it by hand removes the risk of random pollination of the wind. 
so he could make sure his accuracy was improved. And also he repeated the experiment hundreds of times, which increased reliability. Because if it only happened once, then it might be, you know, if he did it again, it might be completely different, then his experiment would be false. But by doing it hundreds of times and always getting the same result, he can make sure his actual findings were true, correct. So these were some of the techniques that led to success. Thank you for watching.